friends. Here's the equation we have to solve. Might look a little bit intimidating at first, but we're here to knock it down and make sense of it. Um, and it, it, it can look intimidating. You've got an exponent in there, you've got multiplication, you've got parentheses. It's like an order of operations nightmare because you've got pretty much every level of order of operations. Addition, multiplication, parentheses, exponents. And then you throw it in, you got dollar signs. I don't want you to freak out. Solving an equation like this is just like any other little problem solving kind of thing. To give you a parallel but not equivalent example, just this weekend, I had to rebuild the carburetor on our uh, garden cultivator. It's been 15 years since it got replaced. And what I did as I was, as I was replacing the carburetor, which I had never done before, I had the thing 15 years, I put the cultivator down, opened up the air intake, got my Phillips head screwdriver, took the screws out, removed the old carburetor, put the new carburetor in, put the screws back in, put the air intake on top. Now, if you think about the steps I just described, the first thing I did was I took the air intake cover off. The last thing I did was put the air intake cover back on. The second thing I did when I was replacing the carburetor was taking the screws out. The second to last thing I did in replacing it was putting the screws back in. The last thing I did for the replacement was pulling the old carburetor off. First thing I did in rebuilding it was putting the new carb on. So hopefully you're seeing what's going on. When I, everything I undid on the cultivator, I had to do exactly the opposite in the opposite order in putting it back together. If I took this off first, I put it back on last. That's the same way you solve equations, just like this. So what I'm gonna look at here, I wanna be able to get this. This is my new carb, so to speak. <laughs> I have to get that thing exposed. I have to figure out how to get rid exposed. So if I'm thinking about that, I want to do some stuff in colored marker to demonstrate this. If I want to start with the rate, I have to know how this side of the equation was built in order to know how to take it apart. So the first thing I'm going to do, order of operations wise, if I knew what this rate was, since it's in parentheses, the first thing I have to do is I have to add one to it. That's the first thing. One plus the rate because that's in parentheses. So step one, add one to the rate. Okay? Then, step two, order of operations wise, is raise it to the 30th power. Raise it to the 30th power. And then step three is to multiply it by the $3.35. So again, an overlay on top of the video here. Step one was add one. Step two was raise it to the 30th power. And step three was multiply by $3.35. Okay, now I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna see the steps that we have to do to undo that. The last step we did was to multiply by $3.35. That means the first thing we have to do now is the opposite of that. If the last thing we did was multiply by $3.35, the first thing we're gonna do now is to divide by $3.35. So I'm gonna do this in blue. I'm going to divide this side by $3.35, and I'm also going to divide this side by $3.35. Okay, now on the right side where the expression is, this is nice because this $3.35 is going to divide off this $3.35 and you're going to be left with just one plus the rate raised to the 30th power. That was the whole point of doing the division was to get rid of the $3.35. What I'd like you to do right now is press pause and enter this into your calculator. And I would use Google for this. I'm not sure if your calculator will actually do it. You can try it. Make sure to include the dollar signs. 
dollar sign, seven dollars twenty-five cents divided by dollar signs, three dollars and thirty-five cents. Press pause. I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> All right. So I got seven dollars twenty-five cents divided by three dollars thirty-five cents, and I'm pressing enter. Yep. There we go. I get two. I don't know if you can see that right there. 2.16417. And you, you look at that and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. Where's the dollar sign? You gotta remember, you divided it off. The dollar signs divide off and all you have left, I forgot what it was already, is about 2.164. I'm rounding it off if that's okay. 2.164. What does that mean? That means that this number is 2.164 times smaller than that number. Or, said a different way, this number is 2.164 times more than that number. And you want the dollar sign to go away because you don't, dollars are going down. This is, a, this, is, this is just numbers, this is a unitless number. It's gonna be a percent by the time we're done. Fabulous. So the first thing we had to do to solve it was undo the last thing that was done to build it. Check, ba boom. If you remember when we were building this expression, the middle thing we did was we took one plus rate and we raised it to the 30th power. So we did right here. This is gonna be the one that most, I shouldn't say most, many of you may have never seen before. We have to undo raising something to the 30th power. Now, I wanna take a small aside here to, to motivate this. The 30th power is a weird one. It's one that you probably haven't experienced a lot in your lives, which is okay, it's totally fine. There are some powers that you have experienced in your life though. For example, suppose I told you x squared equals nine. Just suppose I told you that. I want you to ignore negative numbers for this one. This one technically has two answers, but I want you to ignore the negative possibility. If I asked you if x squared is nine, what's x? I bet you most of you would say, exactly. You'd say three, because you would take the square root of both sides. Square root of both sides, square root of x squared is x, square root of nine is three. Okay, ignoring the negative solutions. If I asked you y squared is 16, and what's y? And you would say, oh, y is four because you take the square root of y squared to get y, and the square root of 16 to get four. Okay, no problem. You've done square roots tons of times in your life. Tons of times. Okay, easy peasy, let me squeeze. What if I asked you, what if x cubed was eight? What if x cubed were eight? You may have to think about this one a little bit because it's a little bit trickier because it's not squared, it's cubed. That means it's something times something times something. But eventually you'd figure it out. You take the cube root, the cube root of eight, not the square root. The square root knocks down a squared. The cube root knocks down a cube. So cube root of x cubed is x, and then what number times itself, times itself equals eight, eventually you'd figure out it was two. Eventually you'd figure out it was two. What if I said y cubed is equal to 64? Okay, 64. This might be one that's not anywhere near as inherently obvious. So the nice thing about it is, this is where you can use technology again. I'm going to literally type into Google. I'm going to type it and then I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to type cube, the word cube, C-U-B-E, space, root, R-O-O-T, space, of, O-F, o -F, space, 64, and press enter. And check out what it tells you. Cube root of 64 is 4. Because 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Absolutely. And what's so nice is, it doesn't matter what the root you need to take, you can find it with the right calculator. So for example, let's just make up one. Let's suppose you've got some number 
raised to the seventh power. Hmm. And that number is 128. Some number to the seventh power equals 128. I think I may have inadvertently created a nice one here and I apologize. So all we've got to do is say, what's the seventh root of 128? Seventh root of 128. Let's use Google and type that in. Seventh, S-E-V-E-N-T-H, root of 128. <laughs> two. <laughs> I did make up a nice one. It's two, because two times two times two times two times two times two times two is 128. How does that help us over here? Well, let's take a look. On this side, all I've got to do is take the 30th root of that whole thing. The 30th root will knock down the 30th power and you're going to be left with just one plus the rate, which is fantastic. On this side, though, we also have to take the 30th root. And this is one I definitely cannot do in my head. I can't. 30th root of 2.164. I'm going to go ahead and, and ask Google about that one. And I'm going to type 30th. And I'm actually going to type, instead of spelling 30th out, I'm going to use 30th, uh, 30th, 30th space root of 2.164. Guess what I did right there? 30th root of 2.164. I don't know if you can see, it's repeating me down here, and I'm going to press enter, and it tells me it's equal to 1.026065 and some change, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so far, take a look at it again. There she is. So when I do the 30th root of 2.164, I get 1.026.06, which technically rounds to one, I guess. And then I can just, we'll round it off to that place right there. And now we are down to the last step, which is the nicest and easiest, thankfully. That was, that was a bruiser, but this is nice. The first thing we did when we were building this top expression was add one to the rate. The last thing we will do is subtract one because that one and the one here is the 100% that's being inflated each year. When we subtract it off, we're left with 0261. If you take a look at that, we now know this number should look familiar to you. It's the number that we got through trial and error when we were goofing around trying to adjust that percentage to get the minimum wage to start at 335 and end at 725. Granted, we actually did try 2.61% in the Excel sheet and decided it was a little bit too big. And it is technically a little bit too big because the actual rate is less. It's 2.606587, but nobody goes out to that many decimal places when they talk about percentage rates like this. 2.61% is probably about as precise as you need to be. Now, I know this might seem a bit heavy-handed compared to, compared to guessing and checking in an Excel spreadsheet. Trust me, once you do, have done this a couple times, it's much quicker than using Excel. Here's a guy who loves Excel and uses it every chance he gets to solve problems efficiently. I would never solve for an average rate, either of a savings account or of inflation or anything like that, in any way except this. Because once you understand these three steps, the undoing of the steps that build this expression, it's much quicker than even having to build that spreadsheet, let alone change it and edit it. Okay, let's go back in and look at how that rate looks when you graph it alongside the minimum wage changes. 